Picture books featuring math concepts have been a delightful part of our homeschool for the past few years. I'm going to share some of our favorites in this video. Hi, I am Rachel from 7 and All. I'm a second generation homeschooler and today I'm going to be sharing a whole bunch of our favorite math books with you and I'm also going to be giving you some tips on how to incorporate reading math picture books in your homeschool and really get the most out of them. Now, first of all, I do want to point you toward Kate Snow's website. She has a great website with a lot of reviews of math courses, um, great articles. She also has articles with lists of math picture book recommendations for different grade levels. And I got many of my recommendations from her, not all of them, um, but many did come from her website. So I'll link to her website down below so you can check out all the math resources and math picture book recommendations she has but i wanted to share our personal experience um, and favorites among math picture books now first of all my number one tip is that if you can try to get these books in person versus watching them on youtube videos definitely you can watch picture book uh, picture books on youtube videos nowadays but if you really want to get the full math benefit from these sorts of books, it helps a lot to have your ch child sitting right next to you, being able to look closely at the page, point to things on the page, count things on the page, because the illustrations in these books are feeding into the math concept being taught. So you can really make the most out of them when you do have a physical copy. Now, we all know we like to save money. We don't want to spend too much money. This is why I'm telling you which books are my favorites, which ones I have found to be really worth the money, but also, I want to tell you, look on thrift books or look on whatever your favorite secondhand book website is. I have purchased most of these on thrift books, most for $4 or less, you know, on average. So they have been very, very worthwhile purchases for us. I'll leave my thrift books um, referral link down below if you haven't used them before. I strongly recommend them for the homeschooler who is building their library. But let's get started. I have to start with this one. This book I scheduled in my purely preschool unit um, that has trucks in it. It must be vehicles at work because this is such a fun book for any kid that just loves trucks because this isn't just generalized trucks. You see all different types of trucks featured in this book and you get to practice counting to 20. You're seeing how more numbers of trucks get added on and more numbers of trucks get added on. So this is 20 big trucks in the middle of the street and it is awesome. And there's a little boy who ends up solving this problem of 20 big trucks that get stopped in his street after an ice cream truck breaks down. And it is really cute. You get to see all these different kinds of trucks, but you're also counting to 20. So I'm starting with this one. This is very you know, more toward the preschool, kindergarten level. But math and picture books are not only for preschool and kindergarten. Some of these are a lot more challenging. I also want to recommend just some authors to keep your eye out for, um, because many times I notice that certain authors tend to produce several math picture books. I'm guessing it's one of their passions to create this type of books. But one author to look out for is Greg Tang. He has a number of books and they all have a similar style in these books. So I have Math for All Seasons and Masterpieces here. And in his books, there's some kind of puzzle or math riddle that is happening on the page in the illustration. And the child has to figure it out based on the verbal clues in the text and the illustration. It's, and it's usually practicing some kind of counting strategy or some kind of solving strategy. So I thought that these books uh, would be rather challenging, but it's been really, my son has really enjoyed them, um, has very engaged with solving the riddle or the puzzle. And I always take the time to ask, you know, what strategy did you use to solve it? Or how did you figure that out? And then he gets to tell me how he figured it out. So that is very beneficial for math learning. This book I think will be especially interesting to homeschoolers and our general nerdiness, math their pieces, because it, is um, basing the math riddles off of different iconic works of art um, from different uh, very well-known artists and art um, periods. So I think that that is really cool. We're blending actual art masterpieces with math and math riddles. So Greg Tang, keep an eye out. This is a series that I highly, highly recommend, which is the Math Start series. 
So they are roughly organized by level. They've got levels one, two, and three. And in the corner, they always tell you what the general topic is. So this one is equivalent values, or another one is about time. My boys love this one. It's about a soccer game and you're seeing the clock click down or the, the minutes run out as you're going through the soccer game. So they have a ton of books in this series and on many, many different math topics, which that's another tip. I recommend that you go beyond just counting addition and subtraction and think about a variety of math topics, specifically maybe topics that you think your kids might struggle with or that you know your kids struggle with. Um, having picture books to just add on some additional um, ways of solving or ways of thinking about those topics can be really helpful. So when building your math library, look to bring in a variety. Try to bring in picture books that cover different elements and different topics within math. Um, but this Math Start series has been awesome. I have found that the creators of this series have a very real knack for choosing situations and topics that are really engaging to children. Like they just pick these topics that are pretty much automatic wins. So here we've got soccer and clocks and the competition of a game. Here we have trading dinosaur cards. So it involves dinosaurs making trades here we have building and then the boy is using his imagination for each um, structure that he builds and counting the blocks. You keep adding on more and creating a bigger number. I really love the imagination element of this one. Um, and this was actually the very first book we got in the Math Start series and one that my oldest son just fell in love with. I have read this. I don't know how many times. As you can see, it's in Spanish. Several titles from this are available in Spanish, but they are also all available in English. And this would be probably called Animals Aboard in English, but we've got trucks filled with animal sculptures that are, and they're building a carousel. And we get to add up how many animal sculptures there are. Now for this particular series, you can definitely look on thrift books to check the prices, but I have found this series to be very inexpensive on book outlet much of the time. And then you can be getting the books brand new copies are often three dollars a piece or maybe even a little less if you shop during one of book outlets sales so there's my tip for you there just search math start is what I've done on their search engine and then see which titles in the series they have now this is a great book for the child who is fascinated with large numbers can you count to a Google I don't know how many conversations about Google I have had to have since reading this book um, it very much captured my son's imagination um, with the large number here we've got our zeros going on and on and on uh, this is also an author who writes some kind of math or measurement or science related books Robert E Wells they're in this um, similar shape and series so you can check out the rest of the series but this is awesome for those big number kids. And I know a lot of kids just find big numbers so fascinating. This book I have to highlight for two reasons. One, it teaches something pretty cool, which is if you add all the numbers from one to 10, one plus two plus three plus four, all the way up to 10, and then down again, 10 plus nine plus eight plus seven plus six plus five, if you do all of that, it equals 100 in the end. So it's kind of a really neat little math fact that kids get out of this. Um, but also it's snowmen, and snowmen are just awesome. Everybody loves snowmen. So we're getting to see different groups of snowmen doing different things. We're adding up different groups of snowmen until we end up with 100 snowmen. It's awesome. I mean, who doesn't like snowmen? Automatic win. This is one of those books that I recommend for those more tricky topics that kids can sometimes struggle with. There's something about Roman numerals. I've had a number of students that have found Roman numerals to be very, very confusing. So having the storybook format, having something that gives a lot of examples and a lot of pictures and plays around with Roman numerals can really make it fun, bring it to life, make it more memorable. Look, we have our Roman soldiers together with our Roman numerals. I think this is a very neat book and this is by David A. Adler. Another author to watch out for when it comes to math picture books is Laureen Levy. I have several by her, and again, these are covering different and a variety of topics. So we've got one on graphs, which is very fun because the creatures are making different graphs to collect information and compare things. Um, so it's a good introduction to a variety of graphs. Then we have money. Money is a fun topic. Uh, 
always something interesting to learn about and you get adding, subtracting, using money, figuring out how money works. So this is a very fun one, especially for kids that are fascinated with this money topic. And then fraction action. I'm not sure that that many kids love fractions, but that's all the more reason to get a picture book about them. So in this book, they have different situations where fractions are needed and being used in everyday life. It's almost kind of like a comic book style format with speech bubbles. So check out Laureen Leedy's work. She has a lot more than this, um, but those are a few of the titles that we've really enjoyed from her. Then The Action of Subtraction by Brian Cleary. This is a rhyming book, which just makes it fun to read. Now, one of the danger of reading rhyming books or any, any math picture book is reading it a little bit too fast because it's just rolling off the tongue. So one thing I do recommend with the, when you're reading these books is to make sure you stop. The goal is not just to read it as fast as you can and enjoy the rhythms of the rhyme rolling off your tongue, um, but to talk with your kid about, hey, what's going on here? Do you understand what's going on here? So even if it's fun to read, it's rhyming, you're in the, in the groove, in a rhythm, don't be afraid to stop and chat about it. Also, don't be afraid to read these many times. In fact, your children will probably request them to be read many times. This is one that has been requested very frequently in my house. And finally, one last one. This is a bit of a classic, so probably many of you know this, 100 Hungry Ants. This is fun if you have kids that love bugs, as mine do. And this is also a good one to stop. We have different arrays of ants. We have a hundred ants that are arranging themselves in different groupings of rows. It's a good foundation for multiplication as we are seeing five times 20, four times 25, 10 times 10, and they waste too much time. So they might not get to the picnic in time. It's a very fun read. All right, those are my math picture book recommendations. If you have a special favorite math author or series or picture book, definitely leave them down in the comments below. I am always looking for more recommendations and I'm sure that other viewers would like to hear your recommendations as well. All right, join me next time for more nerdy homeschool videos. So make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you later, bye.